Hi everyone, in today's video, we are going to learn the open close principle of solid design principles. We will also write a code to learn this principle in practical sense. In my previous tutorial, I have explained single responsibility principle. And if you have not watched the single responsibility principle video yet, please watch the video before proceeding to the open close principle. And the link is in the description box. Let's start the video with the open close principle. And the principle states that the software entities such as classes, modules, function, etc. should be open for extension but closed for modification. So in this principle, the two key terms are open for extension and closed for modification. If these two terms seem complicated, be with me. You will understand by the end of this video. So let me first explain these terms with theoretical aspects and then I'll also explain by taking code example. So let's first understand what is open for extension. So open for extension simply means extend the existing behavior. So we should design our classes in such a way so that behavior or feature can be extended as the new requirement comes. And how we can extend the functionality. So the first one is by using inheritance, which everyone is familiar with the concept of inheritance. So we create a super class and for different implementation, we create its child classes, which extend the functionality of a super class, right? And the second is by using interfaces. So by using polymorphism. So here, instead of super class, we use interface that allow different implementation which we can easily substitute at runtime without changing the code right so i'll show you <coughs> while writing a code how we can by using interfaces how we can implement different implementation and how we can substitute them at a runtime right the next one is let's move to the next term which is closed for modification so closed for modification means we should avoid changing existing code so why it is important that you should avoid changing the existing code when re new requirement comes because in our application once our module is developed and tested we should not modify it unless there is a bug or any change in that module so if you keep changing the uh, stable code, it create a possibility of bug. It introduce new bugs. So for any new requirement or feature, it should be closed for modification. If any new requirement comes, you should extend the functionality, create a separate class and implement that business logic, right? Now, so let's move to the core idea of this principle and the core idea behind this principle is to design our classes in such a way so that we will be able to incorporate new feature functionality without changing the existing code. Right. So we have covered enough theory. Let's write a code to understand this principle in code perspective. So let's uh, write a Java code. Let's take an example of an e-commerce website where we can pay through multiple payment mode. Now imagine in our payment module as of now, we only support two payment modes, right? One is by cash payment and the other one is through credit card. So I have created one separate class, one for let's say accepting the cash payment. So it has the business logic to process the cash payment right and the another class which has the business logic to process the payment through credit card credit card so both classes have different business logic so by using single responsibility principle we have designed two separate classes two different classes we also have one payment processor class so we have one payment processor class which accepts payment mode so in this method process payment it accepts the payment mode and invoke the method of relevant class based on the mode of payment so let's say 
if the payment mode is cash so it create an instance of cash payment class and then it invokes the accept payment method and if the mode is through credit card it creates an instance of credit payment class at in and invokes the accept payment accept payment method right and now we have this payment mode enum so as of now we only support two payment mode cash and credit card so it is mentioned here and and we have another class which is test basically test is just for testing our code i mean we have main method we have created an instance of payment processor class and i have passed cash so as a payment mode so let's say if i run this code so it is accepting the payment through via cash mode right so so uh, i simply printed uh, paid through cash now let, let me change the mode and let me put credit card here right and let's run this code and it will invokes the method of the credit card payment class and here if you see it's uh, it is showing paid through credit card right so till now you have seen this code now we have seen the code and my next question is does it follow open close principle so the answer is obviously it is not because let's say we have to support new payment mode uh, let's say the uh, we have uh, the business teams comes that hey we have to support a new payment mode which is accepting a payment via gift card for this what we have to do we have to create a separate class so let me just copy it and create a separate class which is let's say gift card accepting payment through gift card so i have created a new class gift card payment and in this gift card payment let's say we have the accept payment method and here i am writing paid through gift card paid through gift card because it has some different business logic some checks around those before accepting the payment it has some <coughs> checks some business logic complex business logic and then it marks success or failure based on that so i have created one class the next thing i have to do is in payment mode let's say i have to create one more mode which is gift card and in payment processor i have to write one more else if condition where i am saying if the payment mode payment mode equal to equal to payment mode if it is through gift card let's say gift card then create a new instance which is create an instance of gift card payment class gift card payment and invoke its method gift card payment and let me call its accept payment method right so to test this in in the main method so instead of credit card let me write gift card and run this code so if i run this it will show me the output that payment paid through gift card so <coughs> this seems fine but what wrong in this code right so for every new requirement let's say in future if we have to support one more payment mode so i'll create a separate class then i have to again modify this piece of code in process payment i have to write one more else if and what if if in this process if i introduce any new bug it will affect the overall functionality right so this code is not i mean 
following the open close principle it is violating the open close principle because for every new change for every new requirement i am modifying the payment processor class right so the next step is to what we can do here what code changes we will do here so that it adhere to the principle it adhere to the open close principle so let's see how we can make this code open close principle compliant right so first of all let's create one interface ibay which is implemented by all the payment modes and it has one method which is accept payment so let's say if cash payment accept uh, implements this interface ipay it needs to define the logic of accept payment so they have some business logic around how they process the cash payment similarly credit card payments implements this interface they will define their own logic so their own business logic for accepting the payment through credit card and and the last one is the gift card payment it will do the same thing now let's see our payment processor class and in payment processor class we have this process payment method and in this payment method so this method accepts the reference of any class which have implemented the ipay interface so in this method we are simply calling <coughs> the accept payment so basically any class which has implemented this interface have implemented i mean any class which have implemented the ip interface has defined this accept payment method i mean if you implement any interface you need to define its abstract method in the class so let's say if i pass the reference of cash payment so in cash payment i have defined the logic of how the cash will accept the payment how the how this class process the payment right so if i simply call its accept payment method it will invoke the accept payment of the cash payment class similarly if i at run time if i pass the instance of credit card payment so it will invoke its accept payment method so at run time we can pass any of its implementation and this method there so basically in this method we are invoking the accept payment method of that class so we don't have to write any if else condition here right so in future let's say in future if if <coughs> if new payment mode comes we just have to create a class implements this interface and we are done right we don't have to change any code in payment processor class so let me open the main method and in main method i have created the instance of payment processor class and in process payment i am passing let's say the reference of cash payment <coughs> class so if i run this let's say so in payment processor the accept payment method of this class is invoked paid through cash payment right so let's say if i instead of that if i write gift card payment and <coughs> let me run this code and let's see in this case now in payment processor class the accept payment of gift card payment is called similarly we can pass any of the implementation of ipay interface now this code follows open closed principle for any new requirement we are open for extension and closed for modification so we have talked how this code is open close principle compliant right we have talked lot about open close principles so by seeing this code what do you think what are the benefits of the open close principle the first one is we can extend the code easily which we have 
which we have already seen right we can extend the code easily second it is easier to maintain so we are using interfaces which provide additional level of abstraction which in turn enable loose coupling right so i mean these are the benefits of the open close principle so that's it for this video for more such programming videos you can subscribe our youtube channel you can visit our website which is https colon slash slash webrewrite.com thanks for watching this video and please don't forget to like this video thank you thank you for your time